like every exam, we start off with inspection, just looking at the placement of your ears, looking at the external canals for any uh, discharge, drainage, signs of infection, inflammation. I'm going to perform the whisper test. Occlude, uh, you can either occlude the patient's ear or have the patient occlude their own ear. Occlude the ear and I'm going to whisper a common two-syllable phrase like apple or baseball and have Miley um, tell me what I said. Apple. Apple. Good. And then you'd repeat the same on the opposite ear. Baseball. Baseball. Very good. Next, I'm going to um, what, do what we call the tug test, where I take the pinna with my hand and just lightly tug back up and down on the oracle or the pinna. Uh, if there's any pain there, that can indicate some inflammation and possible infection in the internal canal. So always do the tug test before you go ahead and put the, um, the scope into the ear. Put on the speculum. You want to use the largest speculum that you can that will fit in comfortably into the patient's ear. On adults, you'll pull up and back. With children, you'll pull down and back, and that will just straighten out the external canal. Pulling back and up on her ear, inserting the scope, and looking into her external canal and finding her tympanic membrane. Just going to take a look at this ear. And note how I'm bracing against, I'm pulling up and back with my left hand on her ear. With my right hand, the hand that has the otoscope with it, I'm bracing against the side of her face. I do this so that the scope isn't going to get out of my hand and jam into her ear, which is very uncomfortable. This is really important when you're seeing pediatric patients as they're constantly moving their heads and you don't want to cause any trauma to their external ear canal. When you're looking at the um, internal um, ear canal and finding the tympanic membrane, it's important to look at the um, specific structures of the tympanic membrane, including the bony prominences of the malleus, the handle of the malleus and the umbo, looking for the light reflex um, and all the different structures there, look, assessing for any redness. It should be a nice pearly white color, which yours were, um, and if it was red or bulging, that can um, indicate some signs of infection. The last parts of the ear exam um, are done using the tuning fork. Uh, this is how we test what's called a Weber and Rin test. Weber test um, assesses for conduction into the ear. I'm going to uh, strike the tuning fork and place it in on her forehead or on the top of her crown of the head and ask her which ear she hears or feels it in. She should hear it in both, just as she does equally. Uh, you're you're um, testing to see if there's any lateralization to one ear or the next, which can uh, indicate some uh, hear different types of hearing loss. Strike the tuning fork, place it on the mastoid bone behind the ear. Once she can no longer hear it, place it in front of the ear until she can no longer hear it again. Air conduction should be greater than bone conduction. So AC, or air conduction, should be greater than bone conduction, or BC. 